Hello my dear, I welcome you again in this session of foundation course. So my dear, this is the second part of the fluid flow within a enclosed surface. So uh, today I will discuss continue with the that uh, uh, previous classes that means some theoretical part is there and then we will discuss the numerical, very good numerical is there. So this is the second part of the uh, foundation, uh, foundation course and the chapter is viscous flow within enclosed surface part 2 and this is very helpful for both mechanical as well as civil engineering department. Okay. Now my dear, so before I start this session, I will give you a, some informatic things which is for the student that who is student willing to join the classes online program in 2026, 25-26, there are the IMS some features is there, if you get the admission in online program, you have, you, you are, you are 800 hour live classes with a live interaction is there and also theory book, exercise book, in the exercise book, what is the unique characteristic, 4000 plus questions, okay, in that question post and that question, it is a divided in the level, level 1, level 2, level 3 like that, okay. And 34 and second thing is 34 plus year get question bank with a video solution, that is the unique feature for the video solution, that means in that get book, there is a QR code you can scan and watch the video for the difficult question. And 12 personalized one to one mentorship session, that means the teachers will interact one to one physically or by the online, so that you can, uh, you, if you have a very useful, helpful, you can ask anything for this, uh, for your um, problem, okay. Now, 130 plus year on, uh, 130 plus online test series with a video solution and a mock test and there is many more. Now the second and if you are uh, willing to contact, if you are willing to join, you can take a co free counseling session with the given number, okay, okay, sorry. Okay, my dear, now, <coughs> now, the second thing is that we have also a telegram group and you can get schedule for the free YouTube lecture, that means this type of lecture you can, uh, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, update, you, uh, you have to update from that uh, telegram group and also what is the lecture today will take uh, in, in classes and that for that class the PDF lecture you have, uh, you, you can get very easily from that one, okay. Now important updates regarding seminar, all the things and also the notification of the government job, PSU job, okay. Expert session on the important topic, that means you have a also update for the expert session, that means there is a session is there, so we can take uh, we, uh, that session, you have to update for that one at what time and what and uh, uh, at what time and what day the, the lecture will going on. And daily queues will there, that means on the telegram group, you have, uh, you regularly found a, a queues, okay, queues questions related to the your get syllabus, okay. Now, <coughs> now my dear, we'll start today's lecture that is flow through a pipe for a viscous fluid and in this one, we can discuss the second, second part is your, we already discussed that there are, if the fluid, if, 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 if there is a, any closed pipe is there, if there is an enclosed surface and the fluid is flowing, if there is an enclosed surface and fluid is flowing my dear, this is your enclosed surface, let us suppose the fluid is flowing, let us suppose fluid is flowing, let us suppose fluid is flowing, let us suppose fluid is flowing, this is your enclosed surface this is your enclosed surface, this is your enclosed surface, 
let's suppose this will enclose surface in the form of pipe and fluid is flowing and fluid is flowing with an average velocity v average velocity okay of a pipe diameter d okay there is an inlet section at 1 there is an exit section at 2 and the pipe length it is your one length is one okay now so during the fluid flow the pressure will drop during the fluid is flowing from section 1 to section 2 the pressure will, will drop who is the responsible for to drop the pressure viscosity so there must be a drop in pressure that means pressure drop we already discussed pressure drop pressure drop that means delta p this is drop in pressure not loss in pressure these are two things pressure drop and pressure loss two things so pressure drop why we have to calculate the pressure drop why because we have to require the power transmission that means power requirement for the for the fan or pump to the maintaining a flow that means what is the power we have to require why we have to bother about the pressure drop that is the question interview question sometime ask you from your side from you what is why we have to bother during the pipe analysis why we have to bother about the power drop power drop so why why because if you know if you have a knowledge about the power drop during the fluid flow you can easily design you can easily why the pressure drop sorry this is the pressure drop so why the pressure drop is required during the fluid flow why because if you knowledge if you have a knowledge of the pressure drop you can easily design the pump or a fan to maintain the flow what is the power will required for maintaining the flow okay so this pressure drop you can easily calculate the power power loss yeah power what the power will require to maintain the flow for the of of, of the mechanical mecha mechanical uh, things that means a pump or a fan so if you is so so this pressure loss we know that we know that beta the pressure gradient it is in, in x direction so let's suppose dp by dx is what p2 final pressure minus p1 divided by l yes or not p2 minus p1 divided by obviously this is negative obviously p2 is low so this is less than zero so this is negative sign okay now if the flow is laminar flow is laminar flow is laminar so from the darcy wishwash equation p is equal to p1 take a positive p1 minus p2 and that is equal to 8 mu the length l length l length l average velocity divided by r square r is the radius of the pipe okay so for this is only for the laminar this is only for the laminar for the circular pipe okay now if you calculate the pressure loss during the fluid flow if you calculate the pressure loss and that pressure loss either fluid is flowing laminar or either fluid is flowing turbulent there must be a pressure loss so what is the pressure loss for any type and this pressure drop very important for the horizontal pipe for horizontal pipe flow pipe flow if the flow is if the flow within the horizontal pipe there is a horizontal pipe so there is a no any datum so if there is a no any datum so the datum change is there that is change in potential is zero that means the what is the pressure drop 
is equal to same as pressure loss very important same as pressure loss so this is your pressure loss and if there is a inclined pipe ya vertical pipe ya if the, there is a no any horizontal pipe pipe flow within the inclined pipe or vertical pipe this two are differ very important so how to calculate the pressure loss pressure loss you have to calculate from the experiment f friction factor l by d v square and this is v average by 2g very important so and this is your friction factor this is your friction factor this is your friction factor and this friction factor and this equation very important this equation is applied for both laminar as well as turbulent but this equation is applied applicable for only for laminar and this friction factor if the laminar circular pipe and circular pipe this friction factor f is equal to 64 by re 64 by re you can directly applied okay and what is the re reynolds number and you know that the reynolds number re is equal to rho v average into d diameter of pipe by dynamic velocity dynamic viscosity uh, dynamic viscosity and dynamic viscosity divided by density is the kinematic viscosity so in the form of kinematic viscosity you can write v average diameter of the pipe divided by kinematic viscosity this is for the laminar and if this is if the if the flow if the flow is turbulent you can use this equation but for the friction factor for the turbulent the equation it is given in the figure in the question we will discuss or from the modi chart you can also calculate okay this is a pressure loss now if this is your pressure loss if this is your pressure loss so you can easily calculate the head loss head loss and this head loss is due to the friction divided by pressure loss divided by rho into z so if you divide rho into z it is right now yes pressure loss it is not rho it is not like that this is head loss it is like that rho v average square by 2 half rho v square by 2 half rho v square by 2 always remember okay now if you divide by rho z the rho is cancelled then it is your f l by d v average square by 2z clear na? so this is your head loss this is your head loss and this is your pressure loss and this is your pressure drop so pressure drop and pressure loss are same when the pipe is horizontal but if the pipe is not horizontal you cannot equate both are the same and if you calculate the pressure loss this from the darty viscous equation f l by d rho v square by 2 this is your f is the friction factor and this friction factor for the laminar and circular pipe it is your 64 by re and what is the reynolds number rho v d upon mu so when you have to calculate the head loss just divide by the pressure loss divided by rho into g and then this is the equation these already will discuss in the previous classes now <coughs> now my dear you can take also this one this thing one note is there yeah not note note yes you can take note like that there is some arrangement what is that see what is the discharge what is the discharge my dear discharge is equal to area cross section area 
into average velocity yeah velocity yes or not and that velocity is always perpendicular to the cross section area yes or not now what is the cross section area of the pipe pi by 4 d square into average velocity no problem at all no problem at all now <coughs> So, if you calculate head, so if from here you can easily calculate average velocity in the form of discharge, what is that? 4 discharge, 4 into discharge, discharge is what? Volume flow rate, discharge is what? Volume flow rate, okay, divided by pi d square, okay, divided by pi d square. Now, <coughs> now my dear. Okay, now what is the now what is the head loss? What is the head loss due to the pressure loss? Why the pressure loss? Why because the viscosity is there. So head loss is pressure loss divided by rho into z. Okay, and what is that f? What is the pressure loss? F L by D into v average square by 2z yes or not now we have to put this v average from this in this equation so f l by d v average 1 upon 2z into square of this one so 8 q square divided by pi square d pe power 4 yes or not yes or not now now my dear okay everything is okay now so if you if you calculate this thing this 2 g g is 9.8 q put this all value that means if you calculate like that 8 divided by 2 g into pi square you calculate this thing so if you calculate so this is your head loss in the term of discharge is your f l q square divided by 12.1 d pe power 5 very important so this were head loss in the form of discharge so friction factor is const constant value l length is fixed so head loss is directly proportional to discharge square divided by d pe power 5 divided by d pe power 5 so what is the observation is there ki sir head loss is directly proportional to discharge square number first and number second head loss is directly proportional to 1 upon d pe power 5 clear this is clear beta this is clear due to discharge yes mechanical word head loss loss this to discharge so these two relation you have to remember very good now so these are this is for any type of the flow mind it This is your any type of the flow, any type, either laminar or turbulent. Okay, no problem at all. Now, once the pressure loss or head loss, once the knowledge of the pressure loss or head loss, you can easily calculate what is the mechanical power will utilized due to the overcome the frictional resistance. Okay, how? See now. Once the pressure loss 
या हेड लॉस वंस द वंस द प्रेशर लॉस और हेड लॉस इफ यू हैव वंस द प्रेशर लॉस एंड हेड लॉस इफ यू हैव वी कैन इजिली कैलकुलेट वी कैन कैलकुलेट द रिक्वायर्ड द रिक्वायर्ड पंपिंग पावर पंपिंग पावर वी कैन रिक्वायर्ड ए पंपिंग पावर वेरी गुड टू ओवरकम to overcome the pressure loss see my dear there are many time student get confused ki sir what is the difference between pressure drop and pressure loss both are different thing i am telling you pressure drop and pressure loss both are different thing cause is what is the why why it is uh, what is the cause of this two This, that is the same pressure drop is due to the energy loss that means and pressure loss pressure drop and drop in pressure yeah loss in pressure and but loss in pressure loss in pressure is due to the friction effect both are the cause same but loss in pressure and drop in pressure if the pipe is horizontal both are the same but if the pressure drop what is the pressure drop p1 minus p2 if you apply the borrelli equation What is that? See, what is that? Two point. Apply one and two. So what is that? P one by rho g, v two square upon two g plus p by rho g. This is your energy per unit weight. Yani plus z one. You have z one. You have to z one. So this is in. What is out? P two by rho g, v two square. Upon 2g plus z2 plus this is a head loss. This is a head loss. Now, if you differentiate these two, p1 minus p2 by rho g, this is your pressure drop. This is your pressure drop, and drop in pressure. So this is a drop in pressure. And what is this one? Let's suppose. Ha. Huh. Uh, let's suppose there's a. Uh, uh, this is your uh, like that. Okay. You have to write like that. Plus z1 is equal to v2 square. Let's suppose uniform pipe. Uniform pipe. So this v2 and v1 is cancel out. No problem. For a uniform pipe, this is con con cancel out. So see for horizontal pipe, this is cancel out. So what is that head loss? And what is the head loss? Pressure loss by rho g. So pressure loss and pressure drop are same for the horizontal pipe. But if there is an inclined pipe, so z1 and z2 factor are there. So in that case, this is not equal. In that case, that is not equal. So this is a drop in pressure head, and this is loss in pressure head. so drop in pressure head and loss in pressure head both are same when the pipe is horizontal but pipe is not horizontal it is another than horizontal position then the pressure drop and pressure load are not the same why because the z effect is also there okay so we require the pumping power to overcome the to overcome the pressure loss how pumping power power energy per unit energy power is what watt watt is what joule per second so joule is what energy energy per second is what power so we have to require w power dot and this is pumping pump and why we have to calculate due to the loss so these are the notation pumping power due to the loss pumping power okay so the pumping power is what pumping power is your see see if there is a, any weight is there 
if there is any weight is there, how much required the power to lift that weight up to height h? Height h, mgh. mgh is the power. mgh is the power and not a power energy. And if you write, if you multiply m dot t, you see, my dear. M. Let's suppose there is a weight is there. M weight mass m is there. Now you have to lift the weight from this height to this height up to h height. Let's suppose. So there is a weight mg. Now you have to lift. That means you have to pump. You have to lift that weight up to height h. Up to height h. So what is the energy have to required? So energy have to required mgh and this is in joule or yeah, kilojoule. Now if you find energy per unit time, so divide by time. So this is what? This is your W dot. You can write energy per unit time what? So this is your mass rate. M dot by time, this is a mass rate into G into H. So if you require the power, multiply with M dot, not M. So pumping power is what? M dot G and how? What? In which sense you have to calculate the pumping power? Loss sense. So put here HL. That means this power will lost to overcome the frictional resistance. That means this power is input power. This power is a input power which is required to overcome the friction. Okay. So, and what is the mass flow rate? This is your mass flow rate. This is your mass flow rate and this is your head loss. Now, what is the mass flow rate beta? How to calculate mass flow rate? From the volume flow rate. From the volume flow rate. See, what is that? Density is equal to what? Mass by volume. If you divide by time, that means if you divide like that, T by T, so write M by T, you can write like that, into V by T. So M by T is what? M dot. V by T is what? Volume by time is what? Volume flow rate. V dot. And this volume flow rate is what? Discharge. So what is the mass flow rate? What is the mass flow rate? mass flow rate it is your density by discharge density by discharge density by discharge so mass flow rate is density by discharge so <coughs> mass flow rate is uh, this is m by v density is mass by volume so mass by time volume by time so volume flow rate so m dot is your m dot so m dot this is density is equal to mass by volume. Okay, so this is m dot. M dot is your discharge. Draw by discharge m dot. No, no, it is something mistake is there. Okay, okay. One second. One second. Density is equal to mass by volume. Mass flow rate you can write like that. No problem. No problem. See, density is mass by volume. If you might mass density in and volume. Okay. And if you find the mass flow rate, rho into volume flow rate. So rho into volume flow rate. Yes, rho into volume flow rate. Rho into volume flow rate. Rho into volume flow rate. And volume flow rate is what beta? Discharge. So you have to write here rho into discharge mass flow rate. This is a mass flow rate. G into head loss. Okay. Okay, and see very important if you arrange like that, sir. If you write Q rho G H L G H L. Now, beta rho G H is what? Rho G H is what? Please tell me. Rho G H is what? Rho G H is your pressure. And this is a 
लॉस सो वट इज दिस वन बेटा वट इज एच एल एच एल इज योर डेल्टा पी एल डिवाइडेड बाई रोजी सो दिस रोजी एंड दिस रोजी इज कैंसिल आउट सो वट इज द पंपिंग पावर रिक्वायर्ड ड्यू टू द लॉस इज योर क्यू डिस्चार्ज इंटू प्रेशर लॉस दैट इट डिस्चार्ज इंटू प्रेशर लॉस दिस इज क्लियर सो इफ यू रिक्वायर द पंपिंग पावर टू डिजाइन द पाइप डिस्चार्ज इंटू लॉस इन प्रेशर क्लियर डिस्चार्ज इंटू लॉस इन प्रेशर ओके नाउ वन नोट टेक वन नोट बेटर दैट इज ओके हाउ टू रिक्वायर द पंपिंग पावर वॉट इज द पंपिंग पावर नोट सी दिस स्लाइड इज ए नोट राइट ओके वी हैव टू राइट इन नोट वन सेकेंड माइडियर वन सेकेंड वन सेकेंड वन सेकेंड माइडियर टेक दिस लाइट कलर बोर्डर इज दिस ओके वन सेकेंड write a note okay you have to take a note point something note down okay something note down what is the note here please see please see my dear okay so प्रेशर ड्रॉप ड्रॉप डेल्टा पी इज इक्वल टू प्रेशर लॉस इज इक्वल टू प्रेशर लॉस delta pl when that means you can write like that it is visible na yes delta p by rho g it is visible yes delta p by rho g delta pl by rho g and this delta p is what high pressure माइनस लो प्रेशर डिवाइडेड बाय रोजी एंड दिस इज इक्वल टू हेड लॉस दिस इज इक्वल टू हेड लॉस ओके इट इज लिटिल बिट डिफिकल्ट टू वॉच ओके टेक वाइट कलर यस ओके नाउ सो दिस इज फॉर यूनिफॉर्म क्रॉसेक्शन यूनिफॉर्म क्रॉसेक्शन एंड हॉरिजेंटल पाइप एंड हॉरिजेंटल पाइप यूनिफॉर्म क्रॉसेक्शन एंड हॉरिजेंटल पाइप एंड माई डियर नॉट ट्रू फॉर द इनक्लाइंड पाइप Inclined pipe or pipe with variable cross section or 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 pipe with
वेरिएबल क्रॉस सेक्शन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पाइप विथ ए वेरिएबल क्रॉस सेक्शन एंड वन थिंग सो वी हैव टू रिक्वायर ए पंपिंग पावर सो पावर डब्ल्यू डॉट pump and we have to write loss this is nothing this is discharge into pressure loss discharge into pressure loss and if you calculate pressure loss this is equal to f l by d half rho v square and this v is the average clear so this is your all the note point okay now <coughs> okay my dear now what is the shear stress then we know that at any point is the function at any location r shear stress at any location r that is equal to we already derived it Minus dP by dx into r by two. We know this thing already derived it. Why? Because the shear stress is balanced by the pressure gradient. Always remember, so that the flow is fully developed. That means the flow is not accelerating. Momentum is zero. So this is the consequence of the fully developed. someone ask you what is the consequence of the fully developed you can say that case of the shear stress is balanced by the pressure gradient okay so <coughs> if you find tau at r is equal to capital r that means what is this one at wall pipe surface So what is this? dP by dx with negative sign here r by two. Okay. So and what is dP? dP change in pressure. What is the change in pressure? This is negative. So p two minus p one. So dP is change in pressure. Is what p two minus p one. and it is already negative so minus of dp is what p1 minus p2 so here minus of dp is p1 minus p2 and if total pressure p1 minus p2 the total length is l into r by 2 you can write like that r by 2 now for the horizontal pipe for horizontal pipe for the horizontal pipe for the horizontal pipe pressure drop is equal to pressure loss pressure drop is equal to pressure loss so what is the wall shear stress tau wall is what beta this is pressure drop delta p this is what delta p and this delta p is equal to delta l for horizontal pipe so this is your delta p l divided by l into r by 2 into r by 2 now if you rearrange in the term of of in the form of uh, d so what is delta p what is delta p delta p is rho g h l divided by l into if you put r r is equal to d by 2 that means d by 4 so if you rearrange like that okay so this is your okay now so wall shear stress is equal to rho g d divided by 4l what is f what is f my dear hl what is the hl f l by d 
into v square upon 2g and this v this v is your average velocity then this d this d cancel this l this l cancel this g sorry this g this g cancel so what is that tau wall is equal to rho f v square upon 8 yes or not yes or not so this is your wall shear stress in the form of friction factor in the form of friction factor okay so take one observation next it is a very important what is that please take it see if there is a pipe if this is a pipe okay if this is a pipe and the flow is let's suppose this is average velocity this is average velocity now this is flow first we have to calculate what is the line diagram first we have to calculate the Reynolds number why why because we will check the flow is laminar or turbulent so first we will check laminar uh, flow regime that means we have to calculate Reynolds number how rho v average diameter of the pipe divided by mu and if if this is less than 2300 if then the flow is laminar otherwise flow is turbulent now if the flow is laminar and it flow in the circular pipe what is the friction factor easily calculate f 64 by re you already calculated re so put here once you have a friction factor once you have a friction factor you can easily calculate pressure loss what is delta pl so pressure loss is equal to f l by d into half rho v square f l by d half rho v square once you have to calculate the pressure loss why because f you have to calculate for the horizontal pipe this pressure loss is equal to pressure drop for horizontal pipe once you have this one for horizontal with uniform cross section once you have once you have this one you can easily calculate discharge what is discharge cross section area into velocity once you have this discharge once you have this discharge you can easily calculate you can easily calculate power loss pump loss what is that discharge into what is the discharge into delta pl clear so this is what this is what this is your that means that means this thing that means this much of this much of power input power input is needed to overcome the frictional 
ओवरकम द फ्रिक्शनल लॉस इन द फ्लो ड्यू टू विस्कोसिटी ड्यू टू विस्कोसिटी दिस मच पावर विल लॉस दैट मीन्स दिस मच पावर इनपुट इज नीडेड या रिक्वायर्ड टू ओवरकम टू ओवरकम द फ्रिक्शनल लॉस इन द फ्लो ड्यू टू द विस्कोसिटी ड्यू टू द विस्कोसिटी ओके दिस इज डन यू कैन इजिली कैलकुलेट ओके बेटा डन सो दीज आर द फॉर्मेट ओके हाउ टू कैलकुलेट नाउ यू हैव टू ट्राई टू सम वन न्यूमेरिकल प्रॉब्लम please try to solve this one this is the previous gate year question what is that a syringe with a frictional plunger contains water okay so these are the syringe these are the syringe and you apply the force on this fluid so the fluid will be eject through a needle needle is very minimum cross section area a minimum diameter so i read the question first a syringe with a frictional plunger contains water okay and has at its end a 100 mm long needle of 1 meter diameter the inlet diameter of the syringe is 10 mm water density that means the fluid is water is 1000 kg per meter cube the plunger is pushed in at 10 mm per second that means the plunger is pushing left to right and the water comes out as a jet it is in jet form okay first question assume ideal flow that means the flow what is the flow fluid is flowing that flow is assumed to be ideal if you assume the flow is ideal what is the force is required in newton what is the force is required in newton neglect uh, second neglect the loss in the cylinder there is no any loss in the cylinder and assume fully developed laminar viscous flow first case assume ideal flow and what is the force required on the plunger second assume viscous flow and what is the force is required okay so first is the ideal flow what is the ideal flow beta what is the ideal flow ideal flow that means there is a no any viscous shear stress that means their velocity gradient is zero that is your ideal case ideal flow so ideal flow is nothing very important information i i want to share you ideal flow ideal flow ideal flow sometime it is called also uniform flow uniform flow okay and uniform flow that means all the layer fluid layer moving with a same velocity that means the velocity profile it is look like that this is the velocity profile of uniform flow this is the velocity profile of uniform flow all the flow have a same velocity of the layer of the same velocity so all the layer have a same velocity there is no any viscosity viscous shear stress so uniform flow that means no viscous shear stress ya viscous stresses that means you can say that you can say that no viscous stresses if there is a no any viscous stresses there is a no any momentum transfer so there is a no any viscosity also you can say like that and if there is a no viscous stresses that means tau is zero and tau is zero the velocity gradient is zero why because we know that tau is equal to mu du over dy this mu it is zero 
tau it is 0 why because it is viscous no viscous stresses mu it is a property so this d over dy is 0 that means the velocity gradient is parallel to the y axis let us suppose this is y axis so the velocity gradient d u with respect to y is not changing is 0. So, viscous flow the velocity gradient is 0, viscous flow the velocity gradient is 0, ok. Ok, no problem at all, we will discuss this problem tomorrow, ok, why you got time is in that here. So, we will dis discuss this problem, why you it is take time approximately 15, 20 minutes, ok. So, we will discuss this problem, same problem tomorrow, ok, this same problem and second problem also, why you got tomorrow, tomorrow is the uh, class also the viscous flow through a closed surface of part third. We will discuss tomorrow, okay? Up to that. Thank you. Bye bye.